1937, a young Japanese textile salesman is visiting America when he's given a tour of Henry Ford's automobile assembly line. His reaction? I can do better. Upon returning to Japan, he asked his father about giving up textiles and making automobiles. His father dismissed his son's idea and said automobiles were a waste of time. The world will always need clothing material. But one day his son, Kichiro Toyota, would create an automobile corporation that would rival all other car companies in the world. This is the story of a hard-working man who turned his interest in machines into one of the leading automobile companies in the world. Our story begins long before the birth of Kichiro. It starts with his father Sakichi Toyota, born in 1867 in a remote farming village in Yamaguchi, Japan. Sakichi was meant to follow in his family's generations of farming. However, at age 18, Sakichi applied for a traveling position at a weaving company and left home to begin studying the creation of a new invention, the loom. Five years later, Sakichi patented his first loom, and over the next several decades, Sakichi would become known as the king of Japanese inventors, creating dozens of textile manufacturing companies, including Toyota Loom Works. However, it came at a cost. Sakichi's wife, Tammy, who had given birth to his son, Kichiro, in 1894, was sick of her workaholic husband. He was never home, too busy building factories. Tammy took their son, Kichiro, and moved hundreds of miles away to Nagoya, where Kichiro grew up. Kichiro was an excellent student, and like his estranged father, had a keen interest in mechanical engineering. He got a degree in 1920 from Tokyo Imperial University. The following year, Kichiro reconnected with his father and began working with him at one of his manufacturing plants that made parts for looms. For the next two years, Kichiro traveled through America and Europe, learning about the spinning inventions and the weaving industry. But he also learned about a new invention sweeping the West, the automobile. 1924, back in Japan, Kichiro worked with his father to develop automatic looms, yet he couldn't stop thinking about what he had seen with the automobile. He wanted to work on developing it in Japan. However, his father strongly disagreed. Over the next several years, as Kichiro rose the business ranks at his father's company, he continued to travel to Western countries, but he secretly had a new mission in mind, to learn as much as he could about the manufacturing of automobiles. Kichiro believed that the future would be in automobiles, not textiles. In 1930, Kichiro's father, Sakichi, died and left Kichiro the textile business. He finally felt the freedom to explore his own interests, not just textiles and looms. So Kichiro took a chance that would change his life forever. Three years after the death of his father, Kichiro created the Toyota Industries Corporation and began building automobiles. Kichiro began working on his very first car, the Model AA. The Model AA was Toyota's first passenger vehicle, and it made its debut at the Tokyo Motor Show in October 1935. It was an instant hit, and it would cement his reputation as the leading innovator in the automobile industry in Japan. However, Kichiro was not content just to sit back. He knew there was room for improvement. In 1937, he again traveled to the United States to study Henry Ford's assembly line production methods. When he returned to Japan, he implemented those methods, and he also decided to refine them he came up with a new production system, the Toyota Production System. This system is based on two principles, just-in-time production and judoka. Just-in-time production is a process where materials are delivered only when they are needed, which reduces the waste and inventory costs. Judoka is a process where defects are detected immediately so they can be fixed right away, preventing them from being passed down the assembly line. Together, these two principles gave Toyota an edge in assembly line manufacturing and at a cheaper cost than American automobiles. Kichiro's dedication to continuous improvement paid off handsomely. Toyota began to produce cars and the Japanese people bought them. By 1938, in order to meet rising demand, Toyota even opened a second auto factory. However, Kichiro could have never predicted what would happen next. In 1937, the Sino-Japanese War broke out, disrupting the booming Japanese automobile industry. The Japanese government restricted automobile production in favor of products for the military. This took a big toll on Toyota. Instead of passenger vehicles, the Toyota Motor Corporation was required to provide trucks to the military and munitions industries. In addition, the production of passenger cars was restricted. Then the situation became worse. World War II. The Toyota Motor Corporation was designated a munitions company and kept under strict government control. Kichiro's dream of making cars for eager customers would have to wait years. 
However, during this wartime, Kichiro concentrated on thinking about technical problems on making automobiles better. Even though the production of passenger cars was prohibited by the government, research for passenger cars was still allowed. Kichiro believed that the automobile business would rebound quickly after the wars, so he continued to develop and improve automobile engines. Also, Kichiro was contracted to repair damaged United States military vehicles in Japan. It turned out to be a golden opportunity for Toyota, as his employees got to know the structure of American cars. They actively absorbed the advanced parts of the American cars and would use it as a reference on the development of its own passenger cars. 1945. As the war ended, Toyota faced a new challenge. How to get its factories back up and running and restart vehicle production. Many of the company's buildings had been completely destroyed by Allied bombings, and Japan was completely demolished. And with Japan's economy in shambles, there was no demand for new cars. Ichiro knew that if he didn't take control of the situation, the Japanese automobile industry might never recover. So Kichiro invited representatives of distribution companies nationwide to the area of Koromo. He discussed policy changes at Toyota Motor Corporation and held talks for the recovery of the automobile industry. In his speeches, he was forceful and passionate, and it was motivating for all makers of Japanese automobiles. He became a leader in the industry, and he oversaw the final release of government control over the car companies. And with no more government restrictions, Kichiro restored Toyota to its pre-war days, creating automobiles for the public's growing demand. However, things were still tough all over. Raw materials and parts were not immediately available in the poor period after the war, and it was difficult to get cheap and good quality genuine parts compared to before. It would take two years after the war ended before Kichiro could start up a monthly production of 500 cars. Kichiro continued to put a great deal of effort into passenger cars in terms of research, manufacturing, and selling. In June 1947, the Japanese government finally approved the production of passenger cars. The first Japanese passenger car after the war was the SA model, with an S engine, and it was released under the nicknamed Toyopet. However, these passenger cars did not sell at all. Kichiro worried about whether his cars could beat American cars. Also, if the Toyota Motor Company couldn't complete a car, that would be better and cheaper than an American car and that Japanese people were willing to buy, Kichiro knew that he had no chance. Adding to that, competition from the American automobile companies and problems with Japanese labor cut into their ability to be competitive. Materials to build cars were still hard to get and all Japanese car manufacturers had taken big hits, including Nissan and Isuzu. Labor strikes were becoming routine and the number of cars being output, albeit smaller than Kichiro preferred, were still not being sold due to a slowly recovering economy. Kichiro refused to give in to labor demands as it would bankrupt his company, which only increased employee unrest. It became clear to Kichiro that these corporate problems were too much to handle and the negotiations became so intense that he became ill. On June 5, 1950, Kichiro resigned as president. By his retirement, the strike finally ended. Upon his retirement, Kichiro's cousin Ihai Toyota assumed control of the company and returned Toyota into a global household name. After retiring from the presidency, Kichiro created a laboratory at his home in Okamoto, Setagaya, Tokyo, and worked every day to design a small helicopter. On March 27, 1952, Toyota died after suffering a fall resulting from a cerebral hemorrhage caused by chronic disease. He was 57 years old. Ehi was responsible for the release of the Toyota Corolla in 1966, and by 1974, it would be one of the best-selling cars in the world. Since then, Toyota has been a leading competitor in the production and sale of automobiles worldwide. What started as a humble textile company has become a global conglomerate with a presence in more than 170 countries around the world. Kichiro Toyota was a man with a vision. He took over his father's small loom company in 1937 and turned it into one of the world's largest automakers. Through his dedication and determination, he helped Toyota weather some of the toughest times in its history and laid the foundation for the company's future success. He left behind a legacy that continues to influence not just his company, but also businesses around the globe. If you're ever looking for proof that one person can really make a difference, look no further than Kichiro Toyota, the man who built an empire. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future video. We'll see you in the next one.